For a number of years, the luxury car market in Britain has been one of the most important in Europe. Even today, it remains one of the most prestigious car markets in the world. Indeed, it was the British market that first saw the development of the luxury car on a large scale. And as other markets have evolved, so the number of models we have to choose from has increased. These are four current contenders for this important sector of the market, with cars like the BMW and that great institution, the Mercedes-Benz, typifying the competitiveness of the market. Of course, as it's expanded, particularly within the fleet sector, so manufacturers like Ford and Vauxhall have stepped in, relying heavily on their involvement in the luxury sector. Alfa Romeo recently introduced the 164 to help re-establish its reputation as a quality car manufacturer. However, as prices creep ever upwards and the cost of ownership is scrutinised ever more carefully by private buyers and the fleet sector alike, manufacturers with a reputation for value and reliability, like Mitsubishi Motors, have been quick to realise the importance of developing their own luxury car. At the Tokyo Motor Show in November 1989, Mitsubishi unveiled the Diamante and when it was introduced in the domestic market in the summer of 1990, it became an outright success. In fact, by the end of the year, there was a three-month waiting list for the new car, something which is virtually unheard of in Japan. Meanwhile, in Britain, the luxury car market is represented by around 100,000 new car sales per annum. Now, in Britain, Europe and other world markets, the new Mitsubishi is called the Sigma, and here it is. It's a powerful-looking 3-litre V6 luxury car which starts life already holding Japan's prestigious Car of the Year award for 1991. It's a large car in the upper-medium sector, 4.75 metres long, 1.77 metres wide. Translated into English, that's just over 15 feet 6 inches long and 5 feet 9 inches wide. In creating this car, Mitsubishi Motors defined their objectives under three headings. Firstly, to create a distinctive and attractive design with appeal to the executive car market. Secondly, to utilize the latest in automotive technology to make driving easier, more refined and safer. And thirdly, to establish the highest levels of comfort and luxury with particular emphasis on quality and finish. The smooth contoured surfaces present a solid appearance and the slightly tapered front and high tail create a streamlined profile that highlights its performance pedigree. The drag coefficient is 0.31. Now Mitsubishi Motors say this is one of the most advanced production cars in the world and having been introduced to some of its sophisticated engineering I can really only endorse that claim. In fact, there are no less than 10 computer systems built into the car to monitor everything from the engine performance and air-fuel mixture to the suspension settings, the air conditioning and even the car's cornering ability. As with all Mitsubishi cars, the new Sigma is equipped with one of the best motor vehicle warranties on the market, a three-year unlimited mileage warranty which covers every mechanical and electrical component. And the bodywork is also protected by a six-year anti-corrosion perforation guarantee. The main body structure of the new Sigma consists of a light but rigid monocoque chassis frame with all the outer panels and stress points manufactured from high tensile steel. Approximately 80% of all the body panels consist of corrosion resistant steel with the front and rear body areas surrounding the passenger compartment consisting of special impact absorbing structures. Integrated side protection bars are included within the doors to maximize the passive safety factor. As you can see, the front and rear bumpers are colour-keyed to match the bodywork. They're also made of thermoplastic olefin. It's a new impact-absorbing material that not only minimises damage, but can also return to its original shape after careless parking offenders have paid it a visit. And that sort of thoughtfulness extends throughout. You only have to open and close one of the Sigma's doors to realise just how solidly built it is. The other nice thing about this particular model It's how good it smells in here. You see, for just over a thousand pounds, you can equip the entire interior, seats, door trims and so on, with good quality leather. Shut the door and you're surrounded by technology, powered seats, for example. Now, earlier on, I set mine so that it was comfortable for my six foot five inch beanpole frame. By pressing this memory button, that information was stored in one of the 10 computers I mentioned earlier. And all I have to do now is recall that memory.
The seat readjusts itself to my original setting, despite the fact that someone has changed the setting in the meantime. And so that your wife or chauffeur doesn't feel left out, there's a second memory facility which can store their appropriate details. Yet another computer also operates the Sigma's electronic time and alarm control systems. This means you can't lock the car manually through the central locking system if the ignition key is still in place. It means that the interior lights fade slowly after the door is shut, and it controls the length of time the heated rear window and door mirrors stay on so that you don't drain the battery. The new Mitsubishi Sigma has a four-speed automatic gearbox as standard. Mind you, it's no ordinary automatic gearbox. Each time a gear change takes place, a microprocessor controls the degree of clutch action required through the torque converter. At the same time, the microprocessor adjusts continually the engine's ignition timing so that completely smooth gear changes take place both up and down the range. In addition, the automatic gearbox features a special overdrive switch which acts as a sort of fourth gear economy ratio. And then there's the power economy mode switch which a driver can use to choose the performance best suited to the conditions that are prevailing. Once the driver has selected either mode, the computer does the rest, simply selecting between the two different gear shift patterns. And of course you can change mode whenever you want. As you look around the cockpit of this car, you quickly realise that it lacks for absolutely nothing. The only thing it could really do with, perhaps, is a television and navigation system. Mind you, that isn't too far-fetched. If you order the car in Japan, you can actually order it with a television, a VDU screen, and with that, you get a special navigation system that pinpoints with incredible accuracy where you are, whether you're in the town or the country, to with an accuracy of 50 metres. In Britain, it is illegal for the driver of a car to be able to have visual reference of a TV screen while driving. And as yet, the compact disc navigation system, which is available in Japan, is not yet readily available here. However, it's only a matter of time. And anyway, a TV in the car isn't everyone's cup of tea. So most customers should be content with this sophisticated high-tech audio system, which is also fitted as standard in the Sigma. It's a four-channel stereo system which incorporates FM, medium wave and long wave radio, plus a stereo cassette player with Dolby and a multi-compact disc player. A special compact disc library unit is then fitted in the boot of the car. You simply load it up and then select the disc and the track you want from the control panel. Then you relax and enjoy your drive. And in order to make the system vandal proof, you simply release this button here and the front panel comes out for you to put in your pocket or briefcase. The unit is then useless to anyone who is intent on stealing your in-car entertainment. Automatic air conditioning, cruise control, power windows, electrically operated sliding glass sunroof, adjustable headlight levelling and adjustable front seatbelt anchorage points are all part of the Sigma standard specification. A spacious 14.8 cubic feet of luggage space is also provided with a low rear loading sill. But unlike other cars in its class, with Sigma you can also increase the car's load carrying capacity by simply folding down the asymmetrically split folding rear seats. All the door trims are beautifully sculptured and even the rear ashtrays emerge from each door panel at the touch of a button. The Sigma's windows are lightly tinted and the windscreen is laminated for increased safety. Both the boot lid and the fuel cover can be opened by remote control from the driver's seat position. And from an environmental point of view, the Sigma only runs on unleaded fuel because it's also equipped with a three-way catalytic converter as standard. Now, how about this for an engine? As I mentioned earlier, it's a three-litre V6 power unit. And as you can see, it's mounted transversely to power the car through the front wheels. However, because of the technology of this car, as I shall explain in a minute, the front-wheel drive system is but a means to an end. 
This system has four valves per cylinder operated through two double overhead camshaft cylinder heads. It develops 202 brake horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 199 pounds-feet of torque at 3,000 RPM. For additional quietness and economy, the valves operate by means of special needle-bearing roller rocker arms attached to the overhead camshaft assembly. The cylinder heads are manufactured from a special aluminium alloy and the engineering design and specification even provides for the centre-mounted spark plugs to be changed at only 54,000 mile intervals. The engine management system controls the air-fuel mixture precisely into each of the six cylinders and takes account of atmospheric conditions including humidity, air temperature and altitude so that only the minimum amount of fuel is burned for the desired driving condition. Minor service intervals are at 9,000 miles. Today we are at the Millbrook testing ground in Bedfordshire, covering an area of 700 acres. This facility means that we can test the car safely and at high speed in order to demonstrate its advanced engineering. The Sigma's maximum speed is around 140 miles per hour and on this special two-mile circuit we can demonstrate the car's capability for fast, safe autobahn driving. We can also use special road surfaces and twisting roads to further demonstrate precisely what makes this car so unique. Just as the Mitsubishi Galant four-wheel drive, four-wheel steer car, which won the 1989 Lombard RAC Rally, pioneered the combination of advanced steering linked to ABS brakes and four-wheel independent suspension, so the Mitsubishi Sigma pioneers a totally integrated system for large capacity front-wheel drive cars. Never before has so much technology been incorporated within a standard production car because the Sigma combines traction control, trace control, active electronically controlled suspension, four-wheel independent suspension, four-wheel steering and ABS braking. And this is how it all works, starting with the Sigma's traction control system, or TCL as it's known. TCL has two main functions, tyre slip control and trace control, which is the world's first predicted safety device. Slip control varies the engine output and controls each front brake independently. It stops the drive wheels from spinning on slippery roads and improves standing starts, acceleration and cornering. When cornering while accelerating on normal roads, trace control determines the level of traction appropriate for optimum cornering and adjusts the engine output accordingly. This surface has a very low coefficient of friction, similar to packed snow. Starting uphill on slippery surfaces causes the drive wheels to spin uncontrollably. The Sigma's slip control allows less traction slip during cornering. If it senses there is insufficient grip to maintain the cornering speeds attempted, it limits the amount of power and torque which is transmitted to the road until the vehicle's speed has reduced sufficiently for the driver to follow the desired cornering line. The Sigma's traction control system also includes the world's first trace control mechanism. When cornering fast on unfamiliar roads, the car can drift out into the opposite lane unless the accelerator is used carefully. Accelerating during cornering increases the cornering forces. Eventually, the tyres will lose their grip and the car will drift from the desired line. Yet on normal friction roads, the actual wheel slip is not very high. Even with slip control, it is not possible to make tight turns at very high speeds. 
Trace control predicts the probable cornering forces based on the steering angle, speed and grip available. It lowers the car's cornering speed to manageable limits by adjusting the engine output. Even if the driver uses too much throttle, the computer is able to predict the Sigma's cornering line and the Sigma's trace control automatically reduces the engine output, significantly reducing the chance of an accident. In order to provide the trace control facility, Mitsubishi collected driving data under every conceivable condition. They included high-speed driving, driving on mountain and city roads, on a variety of road surfaces and under different weather conditions. This information was programmed into the computer of the trace control system to provide the basis for its predictive safety control. As a result of the programming, the system always shows the level of balance that is required between traction and cornering grip for fast yet safe driving. The TCL indicator on the instrument panel tells the driver when the system is in operation. Now, because Mitsubishi has designed the TCL system to be operative according to the wishes of the driver, the system can be turned on or off from the dashboard by means of this simple switch. The slip control mechanism uses independent speed sensors on all four wheels. Each sensor tells the computer in the traction control system when the driven wheels are spinning. The computer then controls the engine and front brakes independently to achieve proper traction for efficient standing starts. An indicator on the car's instrument panel tells the driver that since the road is slippery, the TCL is in operation. The control of each front brake is very helpful for starting on partially frozen roads. Normally, when only one driven wheel encounters an icy patch, directional stability is lost. Starting uphill on a partially frozen slope of 10 degrees or more is very difficult without independent brake control. On frozen winter roads, the amount of friction encountered by each tyre is usually always different. Consequently, the Sigma's slip control is very helpful. It is also very effective when cornering on icy roads. Tyres easily slip and lose traction on low friction surfaces. Their ability to maintain high cornering force is impaired as well so the cornering radius gets larger and larger. However, as a further safety feature, the traction and trace control systems are activated as soon as the ignition system is switched on. So much for the Sigma's TCL system. What about the other integrated technologies, such as its four-wheel independent suspension and electronically controlled suspension? Mitsubishi has also invested heavily in developing a chassis for the Sigma which more than matches its overall performance. In this way, a greater safety margin is built into the car's design and the performance of the chassis itself translates into handling and drivability. The Sigma has been designed to provide levels of safety and performance limits far beyond the abilities of most drivers. By combining four-wheel independent and electronically controlled suspension with ABS, that's anti-lock brakes, and traction and trace control, Mitsubishi has created an integrated chassis system that offers high performance with considerable safety. Reducing the delay between driver input and chassis response also helps to reduce driving stress. The Sigma's technology, therefore, increases the overall performance capabilities of the driver, while the TCL system constantly controls the level of traction to keep the car from exceeding the actual grip available, whatever the road conditions.
Truth be told, when they asked me to come and drive the new Sigma, I was expecting just another saloon car. But I've spent a couple of days with it now, and I'm, well, I'm quite impressed. It's got a terrific engine, looks and feels like a classy saloon, and this is certainly the best interior I've ever seen come out of Japan. But most of all, all this technology, I really do believe, helps with road safety. I think I'm going to keep it.